Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be looking at some examples available on GitHub for the Flare and Flutter project. As you can see, there are a couple of examples that they have provided. Change color, favorite, penguin, simple, space reload, and Teddy. As you can see, um, it's been updated quite recently. And in the process of making this video, it has changed a couple of times. Um, favorite is new and Teddy is also new. We will start off by looking at Teddy, a very fun example to show what is possible with Flare and Flutter. And then we will also look at change color um, out of interest and we will also look at Penguin Dance. Okay, so here we are at the Teddy example. In this example, they actually give us an overview um, describing what they did to get the animation following the text field as you type. Uh, in the past, they didn't include documentation for these examples. So hopefully in the future, we will see more documentation provided by two dimensions. What is important to note here is that they use the control face node in the animation file. We will explore that in a bit. They use that node to change the direction of the face. So in this example here, you can see as you type, um, the bear follows where you are typing. Then they are making use of a flare controls class, which is a custom implementation of the flare controller interface. So within the flare actor widget, you can see there is a attribute called controller and within this, they are passing this Teddy controller. Teddy controller is a class that implements flare controls and flare controls has the following three methods, initialize, set view transform and advance. These are the three methods that we will be exploring as we um, cover these examples. Okay, so this is the code for the Teddy and the authentication screen. So we will only be looking at what is relevant to Flare and Flutter integration. We won't be going into detail into the math behind tracking the movement of the text. That can get a bit complicated and um, that is not the point of this video. So to begin with, what we are interested in and the main thing we are interested in is the Flare Actor widget. So in the Flare Actor widget, as you can see, it references the teddy.flare file. And then what is very interesting is that it is assigning this controller parameter. In our previous video, we did not make use of this controller uh, parameter. So if we go to Teddy Controller, we can see it is this class called Teddy Controller. And then with t within this, we can see it extends Flare controls. So as we read on the GitHub page, Flare controls is their custom implementation of the Flare controller class. And that Flare controller class has three implementations, advance, initialize, and set view transform. I am not too sure what set view transform does, so we won't be exploring this. Okay, so we will begin by looking at the method called initialize. I assume this gets called during setup. Here we have a variable called face control, which is an actor node. And here we can see it is using this artboard, which is a flutter actor artboard. I assume that is where the painting happens. The vector image gets drawn. And we are saying dot get node control face. So if we jump to the flare editor, we can see that we have the artboard. And if we go down the tree and open body and go into head and then scroll down, we can see we have control face. And what this does, um, it controls the face movements. So this is the controller for all of the nodes um, that define the face. So as we move it left to, to right, uh, the eyes and the head follow follows your movement. So that is what we are referencing within our code. So if we jump back, this get node control face makes more sense. This face control will be the variable that we use to define the, the movement. As you can see above here, this face control dot translation, 
and this is setting the frame translation. So if we scroll up, this is within the advanced method. So this as advanced method gets called, you can say each frame or each time the vector animation re-renders, I would assume. Within advanced, there is just some calculation to determine where the face should look at to determine the global position. So this is where this translation is happening. Going back to initialize, um, you can also see it is calling play idle. This will play the idle animation. Then we also have this method called onCompleted. So when onCompleted gets called play idle animation. Then we have these methods, look at, set password and submit password, which we will look at now. So jumping back to main, if we go to the tracking text input widget, these are the widgets that control the input. So if we go to tracking text input, all this does, it is a custom stateful widget that determines where the current carrot is. So out of interest, a carrot is So we won't be going into detail how they do that exactly, but what you should know is this method defines where the current text input is, so where the Teddy's head should look at. Jumping back to main dot dot, in tracking text input, you can see we are passing in this method. On carrot move is a function that you can pass in, uh, a type definition function that expects offset of global carrot position and text chains expects a string parameter. As we can see, here we are passing in this function with an offset, and we are specifying that the Teddy controller should look at this offset. So if we jump to look at, all that does, it says, if we jump to look at it, this is where the actual head tilt occurs. Tracking text input for the password, password field is exactly the same. It also uses on carrot moved, and then it also um, uses the on text change. So when the text changes, it sets the password that the user entered. And then the sign in button, here we are calling on pressed, going to submit password in the controller. This is to determine if the play success animation should happen or the play fail animation. And that is it. As you can see, there is, there is more to it than we've covered here. But the essence of what we want to know are those three overrides that we did. The next two examples that we will look at aren't as complicated. It will be easier to discern what is relevant for Flutter and Flare integration. If this Flare Actor widget looks new to you, then I would suggest you watch my previous video. In that video, we go into detail how to integrate Flare into Flutter. As you can see in this example, there is a two dimensions vector graphics with the two having a different color. And as we click the floating action button, it changes the color of the two. This is interesting because it is not changing the color of the entire vector graphics. It's only changing um, the color of the two. So it's only changing one of the nodes or one part of the, the vector. So we'll quickly explore how you can do that or how you can reference just one node of a, of a vector graphic. The code provided is the date standard straight out of the box example of doing the increment. So tapping the plus, it increments the counter, but with a twist that it um, changes the color instead of incrementing or showing the value of the counter. As you can see, we have our flare actor widget with the reference to the asset. Um, it is also not even defining any animation because there is no animation for this vector graphic. It's only this plain 2D. What is of note here is that the controller attribute has a value of this. So if we scroll up to the top, we can see that my homepage states implement a flare controller class. And implementing this flare controller class requires that you also have three additional methods. The first is initialize. So if we comment out initialize, you'll see that there is an error saying that um, initialize method is required. Same is true for the set view transform and for the advanced method. The initialize method uh, obviously gets called as it gets initialized. Here we are uh, referencing the shape. So we are getting the flutter actor shape. So you can see artboard.getNode num2. So that's how we get 
um, the one particular node, the node that we are changing the color for. The question mark next to the shape variable, it's just um, a check to make sure that shape is not null. So dot fill is only accessed if shape is not null. There was a comment left in the advanced method which says that advance is called whenever the flare artboard is about to update before it draws. So I would assume this is if you want to do custom animation. So if you want to um, add something to the artboard or if you want to change the artboard in some way before it gets drawn. In this example, what we are doing is we are changing the color for the node that we um, referenced and initialized. So we are determining what color is next based on the increment value divided by the example colors dot length or divided by the example colors dot length. And the example colors is just a list with three colors, red, green, and blue. And then we are giving the RGB values for fill color. So fill color zero is next color dot red divided by 255. So these are just red, green, and blue and the opacity. At the bottom, you can see it says we only need to return true if we manually want to animate some property. So currently, this method is returning false. But again, um, there is no documentation, so we're just going on this comment. Okay, moving on to our next example. This is the rock and penguin, also available on the Flare, Flutter, GitHub repository. This example, we can change the speed at which the penguin nods its head. So as you see, we drag the, the slider, it nods its head faster. Um, I believe it is only changing the speed of the animation or the, the time of the uh, animation. We will explore this as we look at this example now. So if we look at the actor animation rock, it uses the artboard to get the music walk animation. And then within the flare actor widget, we are referencing the music walk animation. If we change that just to walk, you can see it changes the animation of the penguin. So those are the two available animations, music walk and walk. As we change between them, it changes the animation. So here we have these three variables, rock amount, speed, and rock time. They essentially con are controlled by these sliders. And based on how high we set these sliders, it increases the head bob. So let's look at the actual math behind it. We can see that rock time equals the elapsed time times the speed and then we do rock.apply, which has three um, parameters, time, artboard, and a double called mix. As far as I know, mix determines how much to interpolate between the current animation that is playing and the animation that will be played next. So for example, if it's a hand that moves up and the next animation is a hand that moves down, how much um, to mix with that animation? Should it happen immediately or should it ease into the next animation? So if we remove the controller and do a hot restart, we can see that our sliders have no effect. That is because um, the controller that specifies this refers to this class because we are extending that class that allows us to override the methods where we control the rock time and the rock.apply. So re-enabling it, we can see it is working again. So changing this back to walk, let's see if we can get this working. This should change the walk speed. I believe we would need to do a hot restart. Um, that would make sense because it is the initialized method. So let's see. Music walk, that increases the head knot.
So if we change it to walk, do a hot restart. And there we have it. There it increases the walking speed. And yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, mostly an example of how you can manipulate the speed of the animation, I guess. But cool, yeah, it's a fun example. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what we can do with Flare in the future. <laughs>